end of prayer. Lord, oh my Father, God of heaven, and God of the earth, oh my I pray that you may help, you may prosper this service, oh my Father. I pray that you may help us to do it very well, oh my Father. God of heaven and God of the earth, I pray that you may help the glorious singers, oh my Father. God, please help us. And the preacher of today, oh my Father, I pray that you may cover her with the Holy Spirit, oh my Father. I pray this in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen.
let us bow our hands and pray together. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. We exalt your name that which is mighty and above every other name, O oh God. We thank you that you have preserved us, O oh God, at this morning, dear Father, even to come unto thy house this morning, dear Lord. We pray, Jehovah King of all glory, that you accept our offering of thanksgiving this morning. God, we know it's just by your mercies, O oh God, that we stand at your presence this morning, O oh dear Father. It's not because of our mighty words, O oh God. It's not because Tunasta Hiliboana Bere but God, you have taken care of us, O oh God. You have preserved us, O oh God, for this day, dear Lord. For last, we say thank you, dear Lord. Thank you so much for your mercies, God. You always remind us that mercy comes before judgment, O oh God. And this is what you have done to us, O oh God. We come as little children before your throne. We humble ourselves this morning, dear Father, even as we pray that you cleanse us from all unrighteousness, dear Lord. Lord, sanctify us, Lord, because we sin against you. Your word says that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just forgive us our sins, Lord. We confess of our guilt this morning, and we pray because of Christ, you make us the righteousness of God, that you will see us, see us, oh God, in the light of Christ, oh God. And as you look at us this morning, you will see us as a people of righteousness because of what Christ has done for us on the cross. We give you thanks we give you adoration, oh God, this morning. Thank you even for these little dear ones, oh God. We have, they have come, oh God, seeking you. And your word says that when the little children come unto you, Lord, that we, you do receive them, oh God. And your word also says that when we train them in the way they should go, that, Father, they will never depart from this way, oh God. We declare to these little ones in this house, oh God, that they will forever serve you in thy house, oh God. They will never depart from this way, oh dear Father, because your promise is yes and amen. We thank you because God we are dedicating our children to you, dear Lord. This morning we declare that they belong to you, that they all will serve you, dear Father, and that the evil one will not have each one of them. You say that he loves like a lion, seeking someone to devour, but we are declaring this morning that you not devour our children, O oh God. Even for us, we will be long models to them, O oh God. As they watch all of us, O oh dear God, they will see Christ in us, O oh God, and desire to imitate the Christ that we have, O oh dear Father. How I pray that we will be vessels for thee, O oh God. We will be good examples to them, O oh God. As they look at us, dear Father, they walk in the way of light, dear Father, because we are the light of the world. We thank you this morning. Thank you for the praise and worship. We are praising you because we know that you dwell in the places of your people, and that you say where two or three are gathered in your name, you will be in their midst, O oh God. All we need this morning is your presence, O oh God, that you be with us, dear Father, so that what Whatever we shall do in this sanctuary, dear Lord, it shall be bring glory and honor unto your holy name, O oh God. And all we desire is that we shall come out of this door, being blessed by you, O oh dear Father. Accept all the honor and all the praise, even as we humble ourselves before you. And we pray that you take the lead. The Holy Spirit of God, come and take the, uh, the lead of whatever we shall do, O oh God. Have us, dear Lord. We give you our hearts, Lord. It's it thy loyal throne that you may dwell in our hearts, dear Father, and take our lives, take control of our lives, take control of our everything, dear Father. Oh Lord, we thank you and we worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. She's a 
We need to defend that because the devil, who is a thief, would want to keep us from what we already have. The Bible says he is a thief. He will steal the abundant life from you. He will sit on your title deed and you will live like a squatter. Yes, you will go to heaven, but you will go to heaven like a squatter. You will go to heaven poor. You will go to heaven oppressed. So we say you must lay a claim on what Jesus has done for you because the devil would want you to go to heaven depressed, uh, emo an emotional wreck, and without much to show for it. Somebody has said, the devil does not give us what we deserve. He gives us what we demand. He knows our rights, but he will not let us enjoy those rights. The devil does not give you what you deserve. He gives you what you demand. We need to demand that we live an abundant life. It's important for us to walk in the fullness and in the wholeness of Christ and to be aware of our benefits because unscrupulous teachers of the word will sell to us what has been given freely. People will want to take advantage of this gospel. Paul said something, it is a means to make themselves rich. If you are not aware that Christ gave you a forgiveness free, he gave you a healing free, you are going, the preachers will pray for you, and they will pray for you for those things that are free, and they will pray for them at a fee. You will give them a fee to, to give you or to pray for you what you have already received free. You need just to take hold of it and say, this is what Jesus did for me at the cross of Calvary. We emphasize today, we are not going to live beneath what Christ has provided for us. The church must also not live beneath what Christ has provided for us. If God has provided for us spiritual gifts, in the church, the power of the Holy Spirit, the help of the Holy Spirit. God has provided those things to the church. We must not live beneath those privileges because when we walk in the spiritual gifts, we make the work easier and the work of preaching the gospel becomes faster. It becomes easier to preach, easier to bring people to Christ when we are operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So we must not live beneath what God has provided for us as individuals and what he has provided for us as a church. Today, I would want us to look at Luke chapter 4, verses 18 to 19. Our main text today is Luke chapter 4, verses 18 to 19. And in these verses, Jesus was introducing his mission on earth. He was giving his job description. He was saying, this is what I have come to do. This is what you, you are to look out for. This is what I'm going to do. And he said, the spirit, uh, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free the oppressed, to proclaim the ear of the Lord's favor. The Lord outlined his mission. He said he came to do the following things. One, he said he had come to preach the gospel to the poor. Church, we must not forget, we are here because of the gospel. It is what we first believed that has brought us here. And I want to say today, the church exists mainly to preach the gospel to the poor, to preach the gospel to those who have not had it. Jesus came and said that was his first mission. As a church, we need to keep that in focus, that the main reason why we are here, we are preaching the gospel. We are telling people, be reconciled to God. He 
said he had come to heal the broken hearted. That was his second mission, to heal the broken hearted. He had come to proclaim liberty to the captives. He came to proclaim liberty to the captives, freedom from oppression. He was to minister to the oppressed. He came to give recovery of sight to the blind. And he came to proclaim the acceptable ear of the Lord. He came to say, these are days of grace. Grace is unmerited favor. These are days when you do not get what you deserve from God. These are days when God is forgiving his people. This is the days when the gospel is for whomsoever will believe. It is the days of John 3, 16. These are the days when we are walking to heaven, not on, based on our own righteousness, but based on the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And so by grace, we have been saved through faith, and we continue to walk in grace. We continue to walk in that grace. I want to dwell a bit on that mission of Jesus Christ. And last Sunday, we discussed quite a lot about salvation as the key. Allow me not to go back to that. Today, I want to mainly dwell on, uh, uh, if you can give me 3rd John 2, 3rd John 2, 3rd John 2. Third John 2, it says, Dear friend, I pray that you may prosper in every way and be in good health just as your soul prospers. This has something to do, or this verse, we can link it to what Jesus said he had come to do. He said he had come to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, to give recovery of sight to the blind, and to proclaim the acceptable ear of the Lord. And here John reminds the people, I, dear friend, I pray that you may prosper. Note, not prosper in some ways. John says, dear friend, I pray that you may prosper in every way and be in good health just as you are so prosperous. Prosperity is to be in every way, in health and in our souls. It is an all-rounded growth. It's an all-balanced growth in Christ. And I want to quote a quote from, 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 from the New Spirit Healed Life Bible. I had that quote, if I can get it, the quote from the New Spirit Healed Bible. And this is what it says. Divine prosperity is not a momentary passing phenomenon, but rather it is an ongoing progressive state of success and well-being. It is intended for our every area of our lives, the spiritual, physical, emotional, and material. I, I want to take that again. When I read it, I thought, this is quite a, a message from the Bible. This is a quote from this Bible that I don't want to forget. Let's take it again. This is what it says. Divine prosperity is not a momentary passing phenomenon, but rather it is an ongoing progressive state of success 
and well-being. It is intended for, our every, for every area of our lives, the spiritual, the physical, the emotional, the material. In simple words, we are saying, When you become a believer, when you came to Christ, we expect growth. And we do not expect growth, and not just growth. You know, uh, Pastor Charles, there is a difference between growth and prosperity. To grow, maybe it's just to get tall, but to prosper is to do exceedingly well, to be in exceedingly good health. It is not just about growing bigger. You know, if you say, my business is prospering, it does not mean you are making a small profit. It means your profit margin is very big. When you have a prosperous business, your business is doing very well. So, as a believer, we are not just expecting you to survive. We expect you to thrive. There is a difference between thriving and surviving. So we are not just surviving as believers. We are prospering. We are thriving. And in what dimension are we thriving? From this quote, our progression should be all-rounded. It is spiritual. It is good you came to church. It is good every day somebody is preaching to you. It is good you are reading the Bible and you are praying. That is spiritual development. And in that one, you should prosper. Physical growth. And physical growth has to do with health. It means your physical body is healthy. I was looking at it and saying, we need to be healthy physically in all ways. Pastor Charles, some people uh, need to grow physically, literally. Uh, you know, they need to grow physically, you know. Some people are underweight, you know. Some people have very little weight, eh? uh, An adult with about 50 kgs, that one needs to grow physically. Maybe they have been unwell, that is why they have wasted. They will need to grow physically. They need to be physically fit. We need to be free of diseases. Yes, we will get medical attention, but there is room for healing in this church, even for those diseases that the doctor has said no. Praise the Lord. So we need to be whole. That is a physical wholeness. Emotionally, we need to be whole. We need to be balanced individuals emotionally. We need to be able to give and take. We need to be able to relate with others well. We need to be able to feel the right things at the right time. Our emotional lives also need to be balanced. And finally, and the one I wish to dwell on quite a bit today, it is the material. The material blessings. We will prosper spiritually. We will prosper Physically, And last Sunday, I had a lot of emphasis on the spiritual and the physical. Today, I want to dwell on the material. As I mentioned also about the emotional, but I want to mention the material. There is what people say is wrong gospel. I don't know whether you have heard this. There is what people say it is wrong. They call it the prosperity gospel. They say there are preachers who only preach prosperity. And I want to say, I don't want to fault those people who talk about the prosperity gospel. But I wish along with the prosperity gospel, they would condemn the poverty gospel. Because there is a mindset that the devil puts in the minds of believers. Remember, and I have said it before, the devil works through your mind. 
The devil builds strongholds. The devil makes you believe what is wrong. There is a mindset that people have that believers, or maybe it was there before, that believers are not meant to become very rich. I don't know whether it is because of the story of uh, Lazarus and the rich man, so believers sometimes feel they need to identify more with Lazarus than with the rich man. And so at times it has looked like we need to limit how much we have. Or maybe we think the rich are proud. So they will not get heaven. I want to put it to us, it is not your wealth or your poverty that will take you to heaven. It is your faith in Jesus Christ that will take you to heaven. It is not poverty that makes you a better believer. And I want to emphasize that. It is not poverty that will make you a better believer. Your poverty or your wealth will not make you a better believer. What will make you a better believer is your obedience and compliance with the word of God. Praise the Lord. So uh, we want today to state that it is God's will for us to prosper materially. And our our, our prospering materially should be progressive. It should, we should be moving from one level to the next level. At one time, uh, in the course of uh, the pastoral work, we went to visit a family. And uh, when we got there, I, I realized they were extremely poor. They were living in abject poverty. Uh, what, what we would say in Kiswahili, hali ya uchochore. Yet these are people who had been in the church for many years. I was told they were believers. I don't want to quote which church, but it was a Pentecostal church, and they had been in that church for many years. Yet, they were extremely poor. And when I looked at it, when I, when I say poor, I mean the house was a combination of, of wood and mabati. I think that she was quite elderly. The elderly lady would go, find some mabati, nail it somewhere, go and get some piece of wood, nail it somewhere. So actually, you could not define the material the house was made of. It was just a collection of building materials of different types. And when I heard they had been members of a church for many years, the question that came to mind, is your pastor comfortable with this kind of life for these believers? Where is the pastor? Because I believe it is not the will of God for any believer to live in such abject poverty. Now, I know when we come to church, we come to church as believers. New believers especially, when we are coming from the world, and I have seen it, sometimes we are very poor. At times we can be very, very poor. And many of us actually, when we came to this, nothing. Uh, Pastor Charles tells us how it was at the beginning for what I know for me also when I came to the church I had nothing I was straight from school and I had only one pair of plastic shoes when I started coming to CCI Royal. and we are saying there's a beginning point but according to that John chapter 2 I want to say that is not where a person should remain. If they are growing spiritually, if we can see their spiritual growth, if we can see their emotional growth, we should also be able to see the physical growth and we should also be able to see the material growth. 
So for those people who are down, we will support you in the spirit of uh, true Christian brotherhood. We will support you. But I want you to know it is expected that you continue growing. You continue progressing. Because our father is Jehovah Jireh. He is our provider. He provides for his children. He gives them their daily bread. He doesn't want you to be the wretched of the earth. And, and I think, if, if anything else, I want this to get clear to the church. Poverty is not God's idea for the church. Poor people are manipulated and exploited in many ways. Right now, there is a lot of campaigning in our country. And at times, you can see the attempt to manipulate the poor. Every time when politicians come to people, it is with the promises of how they will make your life better so that you can give the vote. And I want to say sometimes that is used because people are poor and they can easily be manipulated. Poor people will work for a person and at the end of the day, they will have nothing to take home. After all, they were given food and they could have slept hungry and that becomes the beginning of slavery. Because you, you just want food for that day and you spend the whole day washing clothes, you spend the whole day cleaning because at the end of the day you are assured of a plate of food. That is slavery. It is poverty being put to your disadvantage. It is poverty that will also lead to prostitution many times. What you have been promised and the promise of a better life, it leads to a lot of prostitution. And in the church, we do not want to have people who can be easily manipulated by the devil for a loaf of bread. We must say no to poverty. than just working hard. Sometimes poverty is a spirit. There is such a thing as a spirit of poverty. There is a spirit that follows people, that keeps bringing you down. Every time you start a project, it will collapse. Every time you try to build something, it comes down. I have even seen people, they work so hard for the money, and they are getting ready to spend it. They fall sick at that particular time and all the money goes to the doctor. We need to say no to those destroyers that destroy our lives to keep us in Believe us, this church will not have an impact if we do not have money. If the end of the month comes, there was no money, tithes and offerings, and month after month, it is, Pastor, you know, we will sort you out later. Things are difficult this time. Work. And the devil knows that. So the devil would want to keep you down financially. Today I'm not talking about the spiritual. I'm especially focused on the financial. The devil would want to waste your time. The time you get alone. That is the time the devil brings about a pyramid scheme. And you put your money in a risky investment and it all goes down and then you remain with a loan to repay and you become poorer and must guard against that scheme of the enemy. Because the devil would want to impoverish not only you but to make the church poor. And I continue to emphasize, when a person is in need, we will stand with them. But I want you to know, that is not God's desire for you. That you live a life of begging. It was David who said, I have been young and now I'm old. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. 
And I confess in this church, we are not going to have people begging for bread. It is not wrong to be hungry. And if you have no supper, please come to me. And I want to challenge us, DOS. There used to be a Samaritan basket sometimes back, and I think it just disappeared. It is important to have that basket. Sometimes people come and they are sleeping hungry. Just in case you didn't know, there are people still sleeping hungry. But what am I saying this morning? If you have come to church and you are sleeping hungry, I want you to know that is not God's will for you. God's will for you is that you prosper even materially. The material blessing is for God's children. I want to thank God because he has progressively lifted us as a church. From one level, we continue going to the next level and so on. And I want to say, God is a blesser. If you are not sure of that, you can look at the life of Abraham. You can look at the life of Isaac. You can look at the life of Jacob. You can look at the life of Joseph, Job, David, Solomon, name it in the Bible. They were extremely rich. So let us not embrace the poverty gospel. Let us not embrace mediocrity. Let us believe in a God who is able to empower us financially. Praise the Lord. I believe the church should even have, uh, 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 sh should have an arrangement where people can be taught on money management. How can you save your money? How can you grow your money? How can you invest without incurring a big risk? I believe the church should even be involved in the financial empowerment of the believers. I don't want to talk much about Baraka Sako because you might, uh, it might look like a campaign from the pulpit, but if you are a member of this church, I want to tell you today, there are people who can give you financial advice. There are people in this church who can help you plan. Don't just sit back. Don't just wait for your money to disappear with, uh, uh, with, with pyramid schemes. And then you go to the Shyrock for a small loan. Don't do that. There are people who can give you sound financial advice. And when God bless Walk with God. When God blesses you materially, remember, walk with him. Sometimes wealth is also a test. Sometimes when people get blessed, they quickly take off from the church. They quickly disappear from the ways of God. And because I am praying for you, and I know God is going to bless you, God is going to lift you from one glory to the other. When God blesses you, walk with God. When God blesses you, your wealth is not just your own. When God blesses you, make life tolerable for others. Your money is not just yours alone. God does not give you all that money just for yourself. So when God blesses you, make life tolerable for others. We are all at different stages. And you might encounter a person who is just beginning, who needs actually food for supper. So when you are blessed, make life tolerable for others. I'm not saying make it very comfortable, but I am saying it, make it easier for such people to live. When you are blessed, make it easier for other people to live. When you are blessed, because you are getting blessed, in this church, we are getting blessed. When you get blessed, be generous without grumbling. Don't give people your money and then complain about it. Don't say it's because they never work hard. Don't say my relatives are very wasteful. Don't say my relatives uh, don't think. No, there are some people, once they are blessed, uh, and especially when they think it's their own strength, 
Sometimes it appears like everybody else does not think. So when you get blessed, be generous without grumbling. Say the right things when God has blessed you. Say the right things. Have the right attitude about people. As I conclude, and I will invite Pastor Charles to come and pray after I am through with this. God has availed for us blessings through Christ. Today, it's my question to us congregation. Is there somebody here who does not know Jesus Christ? All these blessings we are talking about, they will not be yours unless you first believe in Jesus Christ. You will not be a partaker of these blessings without believing in Jesus Christ. Is there someone sick among us? The Bible says, let him call for the elders. Let them pray and let them pour oil on the person and the person will recover. But because this is the COVID season, we are not anointing people, I will say, is anyone sick? Let him put up his hand. Let him come to the front. Let us pray for that person and God will heal them and they will recover. Is there a person who is emotionally, emotionally you have a problem? You are stressed up. You are depressed. You have a problem. I want to invite you to come and join Lucky. This girl here is called Lucky. I want to invite you to come here and we are going to pray with you. You do not need to continue in a depressed state. God is an emotional healer. He heals damaged emotions. He heals damaged emotions. And I declare today, he will also heal you. Are you walking today with some form of demonic oppression? The devil oppresses people through many ways. Do you feel oppressed maybe? There has been maybe a spirit of witchcraft operating in your family. The Bible says, Jesus came to destroy the work of darkness and the devil is under our feet. And we need to take our position against the devil. We need to cast out the demons, not to be afraid of them. Are you there? You have been walking in spiritual blindness. I want to say God can also open your eyes. Open your eyes to see opportunities. Open your eyes to see what is around you. God can open your eyes. Are you there and you are trusting God for material blessings? Pastor Charles, welcome. Are you there and you are trusting God for material blessings? I am trusting God for material blessings. I'm trusting God to move from the level where I have been to a higher level. Are you saying like me, Pastor, today I'm trusting God for this material blessing. It is your opportunity to present that need to God in prayer. And God is going to deliver you in Jesus' name. Thank Welcome, you. Pastor. Asante. Let us be standing. Let us be standing. Today we are going to pray. And uh, thank you, Pastor Margaret, for that message. I want to begin and uh, continue from where Pastor Margaret has left. It is one thing to have a balanced life. And also another one to enjoy that balanced life. 